to our mid uh, mid mid break episode yeah. two. Hey hey, we're coming back next week with our full season, season eight. Magic turned thirty this year. Yeah, I turned thirty this year. That's right. They're doing their cool magic thirtieth birthday in Vegas this year, and uh, over Halloween. You know what Halloween's good for? Zombies. Zombies. Yeah. That's how I'm going to tie this into this card. Sure. Uh, I'll let you reveal. Let's go with that. All right. So the card, the card we're going to be talking about for this, uh, this, this mini, this mini cast, mini sewed, mini sewed, mini cat, mini cast. That's is, what I have on my pinky because uh, I broke it. Ouch. <laughs> ouch. The card is Tombstone Stairwell. Now, like the pizza. Like tombstone. Pizza, like Tombstone Pizza. But Tombstone Stairwell. So it costs two a black and a black. Mm-hmm. It is an enchant it is a world enchantment. Now, right off, I'm gonna What the heck I'm does gonna, that mean? I'm gonna explain that. So a world enchantment is <clears throat> there can only be one world enchantment on the battlefield. So like the legend rule, but way harder. Because there can only be one enchantment, on, there can only be one world enchantment on the battlefield. That means if somebody else plays a tombstone stairwell, yours goes away. Though, is that if somebody else plays a different in a different world enchantment, mm-hmm. then yours goes away. So it's like the legend rule: if only one person could have any legendary creature on the battlefield, that's the right. That's why legendary creature. So that's how narrow this is. But you say to yourself, well, how many world enchantments could be out there? Uh, not many. Um, the, the I think the most famous one is there's a green one that gives all your creatures haste. But they were all pretty... Oh, much. Concordant Crossroads. Yes. So, for a single green. Right. So Concordant Crossroads is another one. So that's probably the only one you're likely to run into uh, out there in the wild. So if somebody plays a Concordant Crossroads, they get rid of your stairwell. All right, so I'm not going to read the text on the actual card because it's kind of convoluted, so we're going to go with the oracle text on this one. And unlike Quentin Corden Crossroads, this will never get a reprint. Never get a reprint. So Tombstone Serial has a cumulative upkeep of one and a black. Uh, What this means is that at the beginning of your upkeep, you put an age counter on the permanent and then sacrifice it unless you pay its upkeep cost for each age counter on it. So in other words, you pay one and a black on your upkeep, and then on your next upkeep, you play two and two black, and then three and three black, and you get the idea. Now, so what does the card actually do? Since you're paying four mana, and then you're paying two more on your up, two more on your first upkeep for this, uh, what you get is at the beginning of each upkeep, if Tombstone Stairwell is on the battlefield, each player creates a 2-2 black zombie creature token with haste named Tomb Spawn for each creature card in their graveyard. At the beginning of each end step, or when Tombstone Stairwell leaves the battlefield, destroy all tokens created with Tombstone Stairwell. They can't be regenerated. Woof. So, basically what happens... If everybody has one creature card in their graveyard, then everybody on each person's upkeep puts out a single 2 2 tomb spawn zombie token. At the end of that person's turn, all of those tokens get destroyed, they can't be regenerated, and then at the start of the next person's upkeep, they do it again. So if somebody lost a creature, or put a creature card in their graveyard somehow during the, during that last turn. Now now they are getting two zombie tokens, and everybody else gets one. I don't really need to go in depth in how good this card is. Um, Andy, what is the name of one of your favorite black legendary creatures hmm. who really goes all out hmm. and loves the idea? Of creatures entering and leaving the battlefield. Sir Conrad. Sir Conrad. So this was Sir Conrad. Uh, creates, well, it finishes games. <laughs> just finishes them. Because, as I said, if everybody has one creature card in their graveyard, there are 
five creatures coming in on each person's upkeep and five creatures leaving on each person's end step. How many activations of Sir Conrad are we getting here? Uh, ten. Ten. No, let's just, so five. Let's, let's assume the four-player game. Sorry, I, I so can't. So then we're care. only getting four activations okay. per turn. So I play out two solo stairwell with Sir Conrad out. On my opponent, on my opponent's, on my first opponent's upkeep, we all put out four, the four zombie tokens, mm-hmm. and then at the end, we all lose the four zombie tokens. Yep. And then we get four activations of Sir Conrad. Yep. Great. And then on the next person's turn, we do it again, and we get four more activations. Mm. And, and that's if on... nothing other than those have gone to the right. Game. And then on the third opponent's turn, we do it again, four more activations. And then on my turn, assuming I pay the upkeep, we get four more activations. So 16 activations of Sir Conrad, and that's with each player in the game only having one creature in their graveyard. And even if you don't pay it, they come into the battlefield. Like, you can stack it yeah. so that you oh, get yes. you get the tomb spawn. And then it says when they when Tombstone Stairwell leaves, they, they die. Right. So you so you get it. You don't pay the regardless. Yeah. You're still getting the your that turns 13th, worth, yeah. 14th, 15th, and 16th activations for Sir Conrad. So one round with Sir Conrad out, four creature cards in the graveyard, sixteen times Sir Conrad is hitting. Mm. And as I said, that's with one creature card in the graveyard. And we all know that when Sir Conrad is out there, there is no way there's just going to be one creature card in each person's graveyard. Just no way. We're going to load up. And it's not just Sir Conrad. Uh, Any aristocrats deck, Mm. even without Sir Conrad. Blood artist. um, uh, Take your pick. Yeah. Um, Any card... That, act, that that gives you a bonus or hurts your opponents whenever a creature enters the battlefield, it's going to trigger off of this. Anytime a card says when a creature leaves the battlefield, it's going <laughs> to trigger from this. If you've got it in your deck, you likely are milling your cards, milling cards into your own graveyard because you want to have a bunch of zombie tokens. But yeah. Or, I mean, you know, Nadir... My, my old friend Nadir, yes. Adrian of the Destinal, says whenever a token you control leaves the battlefield, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. Right. Or Nadir's Nightblade, whenever a token you control leaves the battlefield, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. Like, you know, obviously that one's a little bit more aristocratic. But, like, right. Nadir, Nadir themselves, like, get a benefit from just tokens. Right. You know? And before you think that this is all just aristocrats, there are plenty of ways that gives your tokens flying. These tokens, as they come in, they all have haste. Mm. So They're going to die anyway, so right. just attack So them. if you have a way to give your tokens a, a bonus, mm. let's say, oh, I don't know, just last week we talked about a commander that gives all of your token creatures plus two, plus two. Mm. Uh, or talked about a background yeah, yeah, yeah. where the commander gives all your, cre- all your token creatures plus two, plus two. Well, now suddenly all of your tokens are 4-4s, and your opponents are only 2-2s. There's no reason not to swing, because what's the downside? They're going to die at the end of the turn, and you're going to replace them with a brand new set. So just because you don't have to worry about the fact that you're tapping them, you're getting fresh ones. Mm. So you can do that. There's all sorts of ways to give your tokens benefits. You can make it, you know. All your token creatures get flying. Uh, all of your creatures get flying. However, you want to set this up, um, and uh, this works. This works in mill decks. So you're milling your opponents and you're milling yourself. Fine. Mm. Everybody gets a pile of creatures. You're oh not yeah. About it because you've just got that many creatures, and now you've got mill going, and you've got a built-in defense. This with altar of dementia, just you're getting more tomb spawn each and every turn because you're going to be if you sacrifice them to the altar you're going to be milling somebody they're going to be getting more creatures it's amazing exactly um i have run this in a number of decks so i mean 
between the aristocrat option, between mm-hmm. just amassing mm-hmm. a large army that essentially is constantly there again and again and again. Um, any any card that gives you a benefit for sacking a creature. Mm. Sack a creature, gain a life. Sack a creature, uh, get mana. Yeah. Sack a creature, you're, another creature gets a bonus. Yeah, or I mean, yes. obviously, you know, you've got things like Mayhem Devil, you've got things like uh, Pitiless Plunder, where whenever a creature you control dies, you get a treasure. Yes. Uh, black Market. Like, there's absurd oh, yeah. things in black that this synergizes wholeheartedly with. Oh, yeah, it is it is unbelievable. <clears throat> now... I might have to treat myself to one of these. Given, yeah, so now, and you said treat yourself... As we said, this is on the reserve list. So this card ain't cheap, and it's never gonna get cheap. We're as we're recording this now, it's currently at oh, roughly twenty-two dollars. <laughs> um, this is a mirage card. It, as I said, it's on the reserve list, um, but it does something that just no other card does yeah. to the extent that this card does. There are so many enter the battlefield and leave the battlefield triggers. It's unbelievable. I would love to try and pair this with, uh, uh, oh, was it Divine Inspiration? Divine Visitation. Thank you. Divine Visitation. From last season. <laughs> yes. Uh, where, so then when it enters the battlefield, instead of getting two, two zombies, you get four, four angels. Uh, I'll, I'll take that. Um, that seems good. Uh, there's all kinds of. Uh, uh, I mean, if you want, run zombie theme. Mm. You know, load your load your graveyard with five or six five or six creatures early. Play out the stairwell and with a couple of lords. Now suddenly your zombies have swamp walk, or they get plus one plus one bonuses. All kinds of options. It's just. You know, the, the number of decks that this card goes into. This mm. is not a narrow card that only fits in one kind of deck. It can go into all sorts of decks, and I, I just love the card. The downside, of course, is the price. <laughs> right. And I think it's cool, too, because, like, I mean, even... Um, like, if you find a way to take advantage of those tokens beyond attacking... Yeah. Uh, you know, for instance, maybe you have Ghoul Color Giza, where it's black and tap sacrifice another creature create x22 black zombie those zombies that you're creating there yeah don't have to leave the battlefield at the end of your turn right granted right? you're sacrificing one creature <clears throat> but that's the idea that i'm going for here is like you you can use them to fuel a different engine right and you won't have to lose those tokens yeah um, it's it's such a cool card um just talking about it over the past 15 minutes i'm i'm getting myself psyched just thinking about the possibilities with this card um obviously uh you know enchantment removal is becoming more and more a thing but also you have the choice to get rid of it too Mm -hmm. like if you know for whatever reason somebody has an even worse aristocrat uh right a lot of right a lot of times um when you're playing this card, you have no intention of ever paying the upkeep mm. because you are dropping it into a scenario where it is going to go gangbusters for that full round. Yeah, you know, you've got that Sir Conrad moment that we mm. just described, and maybe this time there's like three or four cards in everybody's graveyard. I mean, you don't have to pay the upkeep. The game is practically over mm. by the time it comes back around. That's sort. That's the sort of thing that. Tombstone stairwell does, and the other part, flicker, is your friend. Bounce is your friend with this card, because as soon as you pay that up, you twice, mm-hmm. you just bounce it, <laughs> it back out. Now you you're restarting your upkeep. Uh, Heck yeah, dude! It it is just such a great card. Um, yeah, I love it. It's in it's in a number of my decks. Yeah, I gotta I gotta go get some. Um, but I think that's going to do it for us this week. Uh, and next week we'll return to our regularly scheduled programming. Uh, thank you so much for listening. Share us with your friends if you would like. 
Um, we're Temple of the False Pod, where our decks are not optimized, but are played sure as heck are fun. I am Andy. I am Bruce. And uh, that was a quick one. And we'll see you next week with our season premiere of Season 8. Thank you so much. Have a great night. And may your fifth land be the temple. Bye! Wait, wait. Before you go, I uh, just wanted to say thank you for listening. You can reach out to us via email at falsepodmtg at gmail.com or on Twitter at falsepodmtg. Bruce is at Mana Burned, and I'm at Andy Weekend, though you'll definitely notice I use the podcast Twitter far more often. Now that we've got you here, make sure you subscribe, like, rate us on uh, whatever podcast platform you use. It helps us out. It gets us more reach. Subscribe to us on our YouTube channel. Uh, like a video there. Leave some comments for more casual enjoyment. Thank you so much for listening. We'll be back with some more timeless discussions about all things casual. So come hang out, and may your fifth land be the temple. Bye-bye. Should I do my best, Bruce? Bye!